Salam Aleikum, Soleh. Soleh is Farsi, Persian for peace. So I speak to you, I bring peace from the Iranian people, Soleh. I am so honored that all of you came on, on this evening to allow us to give you a different view of Iran than what's been beaming into your um, households all across America by CNN, M MSNBC, Fox News for the last two weeks. I hope that you take away something different than the tunnel vision that you've been shown. But unless I pull off this tunnel vision, I do not see the whole, the whole room. But I believe that there is truth in everyone in the audience and there is truth in every Iranian's voice and that what we hear from the mainstream media is not always, in fact, hardly always, hardly ever, um, the truth. If, if any of you saw our article in the Des Moines Register this week, I was so glad to see that Catherine Koob, those of you who remember uh, the 444 days of hostages, uh, the American hostages held when the embassy was overtaken, and Catherine Koob says this, as for Ahmadinejad, Koob believes he has displayed a compassion for the poor and a commitment to Islam. He hasn't been the wisest leader, she said, but who are we to talk about wise leaders? <laughs> Koob, who lives in Waverly, says our president was absolutely right to say it's none of our business to run an election in Iran, to investigate their elections or to speculate on it. Because this is where my husband was born, in a tent made out of goat hair during summer migration. Uh, outside the politics and the rhetoric, the best part of this trip, well besides meeting the relatives, was playing with the children. At the last minute, I threw uh, colored markers and a pack of paper plates into my, my luggage, thinking that you know this would be something portable that I could do with the kids. One of the things that uh, surprised me uh, uh, immensely was that uh, despite all the uh, pressure that Iran has gone through or put under, uh, 30 years of economic sanctions, military threats, uh, eight years of war with Iraq with the instigation and support of Western powers has not made that people uh, bitter or, or angry. That was fascinating. They, what, they just couldn't understand it. They say, why? We just can't understand it. Why do you do this to us? We want to trade with you. We want to have uh, cultural exchanges to send the students, as I came here 30, almost 35 years ago. Uh, and there are a lot of people with, with a lot of money. They want to visit the United States. So just frustrations and, and, and sadness but, and regrets, but no uh, bitterness. I also heard from a few people saying that, but doesn't, doesn't the United States also hurt itself, hurts its, our economy? They said our markets are saturated with Chinese products. And this is a sheer stupidity, shooting yourself in, in the foot. So my answer to that question, uh, which I have heard many times, why does the United States hurt itself, is that it is not the United States or national interests that are at stake, well, they're at stake, that determine issues of war and peace. It is a special interest. So yes, uh, our national interests suffer. Uh, but the special interests have become very, uh, very rich as a result. For example, uh, the Pentagon budget since 2001, when George Bush went to the White House, has more than doubled. That's the sad part, that uh, so many young people are misguided with sincere grievances, I must admit, and, and frustrations and demands but misguided. Uh, so uh, to the extent that they, that they have grievances, they have frustrations because there is a high unemployment, they graduate from university, there are no jobs, and there is also the dress code. That should be acknowledged. 
But who is to blame for that? So they don't see the main cause of that, the economic sanctions, the military threat, which means that there no investment will take place and the economy will suffer, the eight-year war. So they don't see the, what, as that merchant said, there are hands behind the curtain. <laughs> they don't see those power forces behind the curtain, so they blame Ahmadinejad and, and rise against him. So All the background, you know, could you explain to us what has been the reason for United States obsession for the last 60 years <coughs> with Iran? <coughs> the United States ob obsession with Iran and why the United States demonizes, demonizes Iran. Well, uh, the apparent reasons or the uh, popular, popularly uh, circulated reasons are that Iran is trying to, uh, to produce uh, uh, nuclear weapons and that Iran is supporting international terrorism, right? Those are the two main charges. Uh, the nuclear uh, weapons production has been uh, rejected time and again by both International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, as well as by U.S. National Intelligence Estimate, which is an umbrella group that encompasses 16 intelligence organizations, including the CIA. So that seems to be more an excuse and a distraction than anything else. A distraction from, other, from their own nuclear weapons and other nuclear powers in the region. But let's look at the issue of supporting international terrorism. Well, <coughs> First of all, who has put Iran on the list of states that supports international terrorism? Is it Japan? Is it China? Is it Russia? Is it Brazil? Is it uh, South Africa? No, it is the United States and its, uh, its allies. Why do they do that? Well, that's because, uh, admittedly, Iran supports both Hamas and Hezbollah uh, in Lebanon. Hamas in Palestine, in Gaza, and uh, Hezbollah in South Lebanon. The United States calls Hamas a terrorist organization, yet we all know that it was elected uh, democratically under the supervision of international supervisors, including the United States. So likewise, uh, Hezbollah is a uh, major political party in Lebanon with members in the cabinet, in the parliament, and everywhere. So if you call them terrorists, then the, the Iran is supporting terrorism. There are special in, uh, interests in the United States who benefit from war and militarism uh, around the world, especially in the Middle East. Those in, uh, there are two major interests. One benefits economically, and that is military industries or Pentagon contractors who, as I said, who now take more than one third of the entire American budget or more than half of what is called discretionary budget. That is everything except Social Security and Medicare. But when the Soviet, Soviet Union uh, collapsed, war, beneficiaries of war dividends or what uh, President Eisenhower called the military industrial complex began looking for substitutes for the threat of communism. And that's why in the post-war period, we have all these new enemies, uh, rogue states, militant Islam, axis of evil, Islamic fascism, and now uh, Ahmadinejad and, and, uh, and the threat of nuclear Iran. The point of all of this is, we as Americans need to take a fearless and moral inventory of ourselves it's none of our darn business what goes on in Iran. Mm. They have shown that they can do what they need to to mm. overthrow a Shah that we put in power. We have watched in fear this week, in fear, my husband, that there would be another coup, that this was going to be a coup that would allow American CIA to then take over Iran again. I think Iranians are too smart. It didn't happen this time. The point is, America needs to take a fearless and moral inventory of ourselves and stop spending all the money on CNN when we sp and, and do what we can for our own people. That's all I have to say.